this is data on a global scale. Um, so we're going to have a look at some trends of digital usage. Um, first, you can see the global population on your screen at the moment, and that is rising um, and is expected to do so. That's a, that's a given. The second on the screen, which will come up in a second, is um, the online population and the social media penetration. Okay, And these, from 2012, are growing faster than the global population. We are becoming more digitally active. Okay, well, more people are becoming more digitally active. Now, this is a sign of development, which is good, but there is a network effect. So for every one new person that's, that's, that's added to a network, they bring on average another 150 new connections. So it's exponential. So we're, we're all exposed to this exponential growth in on the online network that we're a part of. The third thing, which is gonna come up now, is email. So email is the most prevalent form of school to parent communication. And email was sort of back in 2011 was declared sort of dead. There were headlines that email was, was, was on the decline. Um, and this was, a lot of this was to do with spam. Um, but the email providers have managed to get control of, of spam. Um, and as a result, email has continued its upward, upward ascent. So, and if you look at the, um, if you look at the growth, it's, it's even outstripped social media. Um, so today, you can see there are more than 300 billion emails sent and received every day. So on average, that's about 200 each. Um, and some of these obviously will get rid of us. Um, thankfully, the, the volume of spam has dropped. Um, so of those 200 emails, more of them are legitimate than they otherwise would be. But if you add this picture all together, you can see how the past decade has been transformative in, in digital communication. Um, and there's a lot more communication to handle. And this creates inbound pressure for parents and equally outbound pressure for schools. Um, so the next thing we're going to look at is this rise on in communication and what it does to parental time. So we're going to look at two connected metrics, watching TV and being online. And again, it's, we started in 2000. So over the past 20 years, the amount of time we spend watching TV in the UK has, has has barely changed. It, it went up gradually until sort of 2010, 2011, and then it's it's been dropping slightly for the past eight years. Stop, started to drop more quickly in the past two years, so we may, may be seeing a major structural shift away from what was classically defined as television, but you know, Netflix box sets on our, on our phones, etc. Perhaps it's all changed a little bit. Now, look at the huge growth in the time we spend online every day. Now, bear in mind that this includes work time work time as well but it's nevertheless it's very clear there is an upward um, trajectory there so now if you add both of these things together to get the amount of time we each spend engaged with a screen it's quite scary it was up from three to three four hours back in 2000 up to nearly 10 hours a day today um, and bear in mind these are averages so there are obviously some people who aren't on for 10 hours a day and some people who are on for more um, so what this, what this really means is that parents are in some ways busier than ever, but importantly in another way, they're more accessible than they've ever been because of the screen time. So research shows that people tend to fit non-work related tasks into the working day in a way that they didn't used to. Um, and particularly when they're possible by telephone, email or, or online. So the fact that parents are more locked into their screens and their mobiles means that they, you've never been able to reach them as easily as we get, or schools haven't been able to reach them as easily as we can today. So reaching parents then has become in some ways, in some respects, easier. Um, so it raised for us the big question, what, what does it mean in terms of getting their attention? So we know that parents are online, which actually means that they are in some ways proximate. But are they looking? Are they ready for us when we're trying to reach them? So we, we were looking at some data to sort of back up test some hypotheses around this and actually we found something which was quite fascinating as Simon mentioned a moment ago. So just recently, only in the past two months, NatSen, who are one of the UK's most respected um, social research organisations, they are the people who conduct the British Social Attitude Survey, for example, which has been running for almost 40 years. Um, they, they, they do an enormous amount of research into social 
and consumer behaviour and that sort of thing. But just two months ago, they published a new report which looked at two sets of data that they had gathered over the past 20 years um, and uh, they realised it contained within it um, information that they could use to look at a specific uh, hypothesis. Their hypothesis was that UK-based parents are under more time pressure than they've ever been under before. They, they found actually that their hypothesis was wrong. And they looked at specifically three metrics here. The first was multitasking. So this was um, based on diaries kept by parents in 2001 and 2015. And what they found was that um, the amount of time spent multitasking back in 2001 outside of work was about 35% of the day. Now, as anyone knows, um, multitasking is a sort of a necessity in life in the modern world, but also the research shows that it is a suboptimal way of behaving. It, it's less efficient than focusing on something specific. And also it brings a degree of stress and anxiety with it. So there are real negatives to multitasking. So parents found that they were multitasking about 35% of the time back in 2001, and that had dropped quite significantly to 28% of the time um, by 2015. The second metric that they looked at was just the answer to a question, are you feeling rushed? And the answers included all the time and then some um, less, uh, less, uh, less strong answers. But the percentage of parents who said that they felt rushed all the time was up near 40% in 2001 and it was 30% in 2015, a really significant drop in parents who were saying they were feeling rushed all the time. And the third one here was what they term fragmentation. What it actually means is how much time do you spend on any given task? So the shorter the time, the greater the fragmentation. And here they found uh, the trend was positive in these terms the other way though so the amount of time spent on any given task had risen from about 35 minutes to uh, about 40 minutes now when you put these three things together as they did what they realized was that it's a picture which completely against their expectations and I, and I think against ours it's a picture that says that parents in the UK while they are uh, more uh, beset by external information and messages and people trying to reach them uh, than they ever have been before, um, which these days is not just coming from the government or school or brands and companies, but also from their friends and colleagues and people they met years ago and whatnot. It, they are beset, but at the same time, they appear to have become better at coping with that. What that really tells us then is that while parents might be busy, and while they might be um, receiving a lot of information, they are capable of discerning, distinguishing between what they do want to spend their time focusing on and what they don't want to spend their time focusing on. And what that means from a school's perspective, um, I could probably summarise it in a sentence which says, get their attention and then don't let go of their attention because if it, what it says is if, if you're able to make sure that parents categorise you into that part of their daily life where they do want to pay attention, you're in. And, and if you're in, you're going to get more of their attention than you would have had a generation ago. So parents are actually much more proximate and uh, reachable than perhaps they would have been uh, in history, in historical terms. And that goes against what we would have expected. And I think in those terms, that's uh, uh, grounds for optimism. Um, so it definitely means that for schools, the challenge is, is positioning yourself as the right sort of organisation to be categorised by the parent as worthy of their attention.